Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do some sort of warm up exercise. We haven't done one of those in a long time, so we gotta make sure we're not stale. Okay, George, you're the deleted Minecraft Yoshi horse, and Steven, you're Kirikurus after finding out the deleted Minecraft Yoshi horse is going to cost money to be re implemented. Okay. Yes, <laughs> long. Wait, what? What is George gonna do? <laughs> I'm, a, model, it doesn't matter. I'm an intangible oh. object. <laughs> Yoshi. Okay, George is uh, Doug Bowser. After finding out Kid oh, made I a call really... video on his Nintendo channel. I'm glad you said Doug Bowser. I thought it was going to be something else. <laughs> we can't go back to that every time. I am so sick of you two. <laughs> <laughs> he has to eat garlic to keep his teeth stained yellow. <laughs> Don't make people think you're slandering Doug Bowser. You're slandering a different Doug. Now, um, Mr. Uh, Caddick, was it? Yes. I heard, I heard you made a call-out post on me. I did. What was the problem exactly? You see, I was in my British pub eating my British McDonald's with my British McBritish double. Yes, go on. And okay. my British cookie and my British milkshake. You sound like a little bitch. And my Br and my British McGriddle. When all of a sudden I got a British phone call from the British Nintendo company and they told me you would only implement disgusting Yoshi back into Minecraft on Wii U. <laughs> if sir, sir, please trust me. If we, have no, I, we have no interest in revitalizing the Wii U. Let me finish. No. You... I'm hanging up now. Only if it cost me nine pence. I only have nine pence in my pocket. I can't afford it. You listen to me, you son of a bitch. You don't get to tell me how I run this place. I am the new head now, and I am not going to stand. I deserve disgusting hey, Yoshi hey, for hey, free. Hey, I'm I talking. Hey. You hush. Hey. Listen. As the great cat of Icarus, I demand. Ah! Take him away. Put him in the ah! Minecraft pit. We're putting him in Minecraft. Not the British Minecraft pit. You there, former President Ragey Feel Me, fire up the Minecraftinator. Oh! Very well. My Minecraft regulator is ready. No. By the way, Mr. Kidicarus, nine pence is only about 13 cents. I'm afraid that won't cover our slave labor when we make the Minecraft Yoshi add-on. But, you know what they say, if it's fun, it's worth it. So, just for you, it'll be still the same price. Now get into Minecraft. What nationality are you? Any last words, Mr. Caddick? I'm starting to fire up the machine. I won't regret okay, is okay. not making part 18 of my Crash Nitro Fueled Rant! <laughs> well, that was something. Yes, let's uh, delete his YouTube channel. Nobody will miss it. I'm still... <laughs> Everyone, this is Kadikarus coming at you live from the world of Minecraft. Turn that off. I don't want to hear Minecraft. Yeah, let me just, uh, click this. Anyways, back to our Nintendo Direct. As all of you have been wondering, why isn't YouTube on the Wii U yet? Well, <laughs> I'm still alive! No, no, hold on. <laughs> I promised the president, the new president of uh, Nintendo of America, that I would watch every YouTube video on YouTube before allowing the YouTube app to be allowed on the Wii U. And then once we have that, you can have the YouTube app on the Wii U. Currently, my job just got a little bit of easier because I deleted Kadikarus' channel and a lot of his pointed videos directed specifically at me, Reggie oh. Fils and me. I targeted specifically his channel. <laughs> he didn't stand a damn chance. <laughs> and now that I'm no longer president of Nintendo, no one can hold it over my head. Thank you, Reggie. Now I'd like to get on to more pressing matters. 
at Gerard the Completionist. When is Buff Boys coming back? I've been uh, waiting a very long time. Me, Doug Bowser. Oh, well, I see. I also like that Buff is, Boys. That is the worst <laughs> completionist impression I have ever heard, and you only uttered two words. <laughs> Oh, well, you see, I started to do Buff Boys, but then I got this weird liquid coming out of my forehead, and I thought it was a medical condition, so I went to the doctor after my morning run, and then he... T- yeah, morning <laughs> run, right. <laughs> he t- I didn't really listen to what he had to say. All he said was type something, and then I only had three weeks to lose 190 pounds. Hey, Gerard, uh, you want to see something? Hey, check this out. Yeah, you like that? Oh, you wow. show him, though. Flex on him. I'm oh, flexing geez. on him so hard. Oh, jeez, you guys sure are buff and boys. You know, if you would just consider working out maybe once a week, you'd be in much better shape, Gerard. Oh, but I gotta, it's true. I gotta work so hard on my YouTube channel. I gotta do a completionist. I gotta do a but. I mean, a, another completionist. Take I that a do... take that 128 ounce soda in your hand, for example. Why are you drinking that in the middle of the day? That's probably not gonna help with your weight loss. Well, I heard you lose weight from uh, 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 water retention, so I'm drinking some more soda. Yeah, I know they say diet soda's better for you, but that doesn't necessarily make it good for you, Gerard. Well, I've been drinking it every day for my entire life, and I've only, <laughs> I've only, <laughs> I've only lost sleep for most of the nights. Okay, well, consider not drinking all that soda. I'm uh, not. All right, that concludes our Nintendo Direct slash date of the completionist update. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. You better have that Buff Boys episode, whatever, on our desk by tomorrow morning. Well, Premiering live on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Well, they took my hand. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I went back to the doctor. I couldn't lose that 190 pounds in three weeks. So it was just too hard. So I went back to the doctor, and he said something about me being a disgrace. So then I blocked out whatever the hell else he was talking about. And then I, he put me into a medically induced coma, and when I woke up, I was missing my right hand. I see. Is yeah, that... we ended the stream like a minute or two ago, Gerard, so yeah. I don't actually care what you have to say. It only hurts a little bit. Well, no Do you want to go see Jim Caddick? Who's Jim Caddick? Oh, I'll get the machine. As I was saying... <laughs> Takes a little bit to start up. situation that I could ever imagine. I hate being in the same room as Cadicarus. I wish he would just leave. Reggie Filzame, I do not like you as the president of Nintendo because you are well, black. Well, I quit. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're starting the show now. Disclaimer. Crossing the Line is not a show intended to bully or harass anyone. Do not go out of your way to find or mess with the authors featured on our podcast. They make what we do possible, and we love them. And you. Thanks. Enjoy. Today's episode is Invader Zim. Invader Zim, what's the theme song? Yeah, Elias. That, that's like your a, new gag that you were. It's like teasing. noise. It's not even. No, just like. Vroom. No, you said you had if you were gonna have a new gag prepared. <clears throat> oh yeah, uh, my new gag is that I bought a cat, so it'll be jingling its bell the entire episode, and you can't do anything about it. Our fu- our new fourth member of the cast, our Magnus, new. the small inferior cat. Our mascot, Magnus. Do you hear any jingling near the mic? It's running by. It's uh, a baby still, so it doesn't. That's right, we can put cat in the tags now. Oh, it, yeah. likes, it likes to boing the uh, door stopper sometimes, too. <laughs> <laughs>
This is a cat video now. Yeah, that is getting picked up. I can see that for sure. Great. Anyway. Invader Zoom. Invader Zoom. So what's so, everyone... Sorry. <laughs> so what's everyone's experience with Invader Zoom? I watched it sometimes, and then I watched it again sometimes as an adult. I watched it once in a while when it was on TV, and then I uh, had some Hot Topic t-shirts of it when I was in middle school, and then I... Uh, you had that sick Gurr sweatband. But yeah, I had a sweatband. And uh, I also bought the first two issues of the comic that came out. And then forgot about it. Yeah. Johnny the Homicidal Maniac was better. Jonathan Vasquez. <laughs> however you say your name. <laughs> I watched it on TV sometimes on Nicktoons as a kid. No, I also saw the movie. Which I think was the movie on Netflix for a little while when Netflix was really new. It, the, it's not out yet. Yeah, it's not out yet. No, there was a Christmas movie. Oh, oh. yeah, the Christmas special. I remember that. When he like, turns into a weird mutant Santa. No, maybe it wasn't on Netflix, but it was on... Uh... It, it was on TV. It was on... I remember it was like every Christmas. Hmm. Enter the Florpus comes out the same day this episode does, so you can watch both at the same time and... And sync the audio up to the characters. Yeah, we've it actually, will work. Yeah, we planned this out already. It's great. <laughs> Even that nine-minute improv we did. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, There's actually nine minutes of silence in the beginning of the movie for the credits. That's what it's for. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I don't. I don't think Invader Zim's necessarily a series you can really talk about too much. It doesn't have the craziest overarching plot, so it's a good show, but it's not like it's not an specifically yeah. for its narrative yeah it's like a, it's like mostly like older nicktoons it's more character based so that being said who wants to read their epic script first eh, i can go first wow <laughs> wow some of this might read very uh how should you put it cringy because of the uh nature of the show but it's okay it's okay it's okay Just understand we're doing our best yeah. We read verbatim, <laughs> even if that means spelling errors or grammar issues. Indeed. It's maybe the first time we had to give that warning before it started, but <laughs> yeah, I just have a bad feeling about this from reading the titles. <laughs> it was a hot summer afternoon at the Hill House. School had just ended a few days ago and Bobby Hill was outside playing with the dog, Ladybird. You're already yucking it up. <laughs> Bobby, called Hank Hill, Bobby's father. Where are you? Hank walked into the backyard and saw sitting his son with sitting in front of Ladybird was with his back to him. What you doing there, boy? You want to play some football or help your old man on the truck? Hank asked, walking over. Hey, Dad. Bobby turned his face to his father. Whoa, Bobby, what did you do to Ladybird? Hank shouted in, ang in angry and horror, his face turning red. There sat Ladybird, looking sadder than normal. She was wearing makeup. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's sadder than she already looks. <laughs> She was wearing makeup that made her look like some cheap floozy who was an, ex who was an extra in a low-budget porno flick, the kind where everyone gets tested, even the cameraman. Uh, I needed someone to practice kissing with, and Connie was too busy. <laughs> so he was kissing the dog? Her mom said she was helping her dad take the old one eye to the optometrist, whatever that is, Bobby explained. That is it! Roared Hank, <laughs> grabbing Bobby's arm and lifting him up. I am so goddamn tired of your asinine ways, boy. It is time <laughs> I teach you a lesson that you will never forget. His ways. <laughs> but, Dad, Bobby started as Hank dragged him into the house. No buts, Bobby. I'm going to make you into a man the only way I know how, and that is final. I should have done this a long time ago. Hank pulling his son into the garage. He's forcing masculinity on him. <laughs> Bobby was always scared of the garage. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, Dad, you filled that with gasoline fumes. <laughs> it's dark and stinks of exhaust. <laughs> sure enough. We're getting too good at predicting this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Sometimes he could hear his dad in, the, in there muttering to himself over the sound of power tools. All the grinding, sawing, and screeching, and clanking at all hours of the night, it would drive him mad. And now here with his dad, he was terrified. His father closed the door behind him and locked it. He then looked at his only son, expressionlessly, his eyes hidden in the shadows. You aren't alright, boy, but I'm here to put you right. You done playing those little girl games. It is time that I that you learn what I do in here. Oh. What is uh, he doing uh, there? <laughs> <laughs> Hank walked over to the workbench and beckoned to Bobby, who slowly walked over. His dad picked up some tools off the bench and put them on hooks that hung above it. To Bobby's surprise, the workbench and the floor beneath it slid into the wall behind it, revealing a long staircase leading down into the dark abyss. You first, Bobby, Hank said Hank sternly. Let's the abyss? <laughs> Let's go. Your manhood awaits. It's Hank the homicidal maniac. Oh. Bobby cautiously walked down into the unlit metal stairs, feeling his way in the darkness, his hands reaching out to the cold metal walls. Slowly, his eyes adjusted to the dark. There he saw a short hallway leading to a metal door with a wheel for a knob like you would see on a ship. Bobby felt the terror building up inside of him as he walked towards the door. His mind was racing. When did his dad make this? Did his mom know? What was going to happen on the other side of the door? Open it, Bobby, said Hank, walking down the stairs behind him, his boots trumping against the cold hard floor. Bobby went to the door and firmly grasped the wheel, turning it slowly. The door made a soft squeak as it opened, slowly revealing the room inside. The light from the room blinded Bobby for a second. He felt his dad walk past him into the room. As his eyes adjusted, he saw he was in a large, brightly lit white room with a high ceiling. There were several black desks facing a wooden wall with a massive TV screen on it that was to his right. In front of him, to the opposite wall, was a large computer with multiple screens and flashing lights. At the back of the room, which was to his left, stairs climbed up a balcony with lightly tinted windows. And above that was a large bronze circle with a chest of hand, claw, and wing holding each other in unison. Hand, claw, and wing. Hank walked into the center and stretched his arms out. Welcome, Bobby, to the last line of defense for freedom, justice, propane, and propane accessories on Earth. <laughs> this is the Honorable Arlen's Research and Development with Outgoing Neighbors. Well, what is that anagram? I don't know. Honorable Arlen's Research and Development is hard. <laughs> and of Honorable Neighbors is Oho. Oh, hard on. Oh, hard on. Hard on. <laughs> That's very witty. <laughs> Chapter 2. Bobby gazed in disbelief at his surroundings. Oh no, the cat's getting into the jalapeno chips. Oh no. <laughs> He's gonna blow his mic brain. Hey. Magnus. Magnus. Why do you like spicy things? <laughs> He's white. He has to try. <laughs> Why, Even what? if he knows he'll hate it, he has to try. <laughs> anyway, continue on with your heart on. Bobby gazed in disbelief at his surroundings. Dad, what's going on? <laughs> you, you always <laughs> make Bobby sound so weak. <laughs> like, just physically weak. <laughs> He's in disbelief of his surroundings. Dad. Dad, your anagram stands for hard on. <laughs> <laughs> you would get back in and What? What what is this place? He stammered. Hank walked over to him. I told you, Bobby. This is the headquarters of the Honorable Arlen's Research and Development with Outgoing Neighbors. 
Come on, let me show you around. Hank walked over to a large computer oh, with it's many wood, buttons and wood 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 neighbor. It's hard one. Mm, I Not see. Hard on. Interesting. Mm. Hard one, W E O N. No, there's no E at the end. So with outgoing neighbors, like hard one, like H A R D W O N. Like with an and or like not capitalized. So I'm guessing oh. like only out and mm -hmm. O and N. Yeah, you don't you don't use little words like with oh. and the in your anagram. Okay, I got so you. don't worry, it's still funny. Okay. <laughs> Phew. Stop trying to diffuse the funny bones. <laughs> Hank walked over to a large computer with many screens and flashing lights. Bobby, Hank placed his hand on the machine. This is clever, outstanding, wonderful, gears, instructing research, and logistics. Bobby walked over to his dad and thought for a moment. Wait a minute. Cowgirl? You named your computer cowgirl? <laughs> well, dang, Bobby, what else should I call it? Something <laughs> dumb like Mary? No, cowgirl. Cowgirl is the best supercomputer this side of the Atlantic. <laughs> wow. Hank said, stroking one of the large metal panels. The voice, of a the voice of a sensual of a southern black woman issued from the computer. This side of the Atlantic, that's a pretty bold claim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop, Hank. You gotta make old girl blush with all the sweet talk you're doing. Well, cowgirl, you are the hottest computer around, said Hank, playfully flicking a few switches. That's because I'm powered by propane, Hanky Poo. Propane is a sweet lady, but not as sweet as you, cowgirl. He would not say he that. He would never say that. <laughs> Bobby could not to a machine. <laughs> he hates technology. Hank loves you, girls. <laughs> cowgirl. Oh my god. Bobby could not believe what he was seeing. His dad, who he loved more than Rocky Road ice cream with extra nuts was flirting with a giant talking sentient computer. Dad, I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to sit down. It's okay, Bobby. It is a lot to take in at once. Hank held his son. Just breathe. <laughs> breathe. But Bobby passed out on the floor. <laughs> mm. That made me think of fucking... Spider-Man with Green Goblin and a sleeping gas. Sleep. You don't know who's out, Gobby. Out of your mind. <laughs> There's fucking cars in the way. Move, motherfucker. <laughs> Classic Spider-Man clip. I remember I read in a Teen Nick magazine that Tobey Maguire wouldn't eat at restaurants that use silverware on any meat or non-vegan dishes. He was vegan. I see. He's like, if they use their silverware, like their knives or whatever, for anything that isn't vegan, I can't eat there. I remember thinking, wow, he's such a strong vegan. Now I'm like, what a freaking asshole. Yeah, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Toby McGuire is great, I love him. Yeah, I love Tug Boat. Love all. <laughs> Tug Boat McGuire. I love the great Gatsby. <laughs> Bobby woke up in a comfy office chair. As he adjusted his eyes, he saw he was in some sort of control room with one of the walls made of glass. There were desks everywhere with multiple computer screens on them. Through the window, he saw the room he fainted in. He was up on the balcony with tinted windows. In the center of the room, there was a slightly raised desk with a large control panel facing the window. At the desk was next to a chair and in the chair was a man who Bobby couldn't see, and next to that chair was Hank Hill. Dad. Hey, Bobby, you are up. There is someone here I need you to meet. Hank turned the chair and saw Bill Dotry. <laughs> hey, Bobby, so your dad finally decided it was time for you to join down here. I thought for sure it was gonna be Mr. Strickland. Me too. <laughs> Mr. Dotry? What's going on? What is this place? I don't understand. Sit down, Bobby. Hank <laughs> gestured to a chair. This is gonna take a bit to explain. 
the history of Hardon. Hank is explaining with Bobby asking questions. Hardon has existed for over 10,000 years since the dawn of mankind. It has not. <laughs> <laughs> That's an awfully ambitious claim. Wait. Before these high computers. <laughs> Before Cowgirl even existed. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dad. How'd that be? Arlen hasn't been around for 200 years. Bobby, the A in our name has stood for other places too. Atlantis, Athens, Australia, <laughs> Auschwitz. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> if it starts with an A, Hardon probably had or has a base there. Hardon has always served mankind from those who wish to destroy or rule it. It does not matter where the threat is. We will be there to save the day. He was kissing the dog and he decided this was the, <laughs> this was the moment to unveil this to his son when he was his most disappointed. That is the pet. Throwing all this on his fucking nine-year-old kid, a thirteen-year-old kid. Thank you, God. From Earth or beyond it matter not. Wait, beyond Earth? What does that mean? <laughs> Aliens, Bobby. <laughs> Aliens are totally real. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we have members from every continent, every race, every walk of life. Hardon is the reason that that Cold War didn't go hot. Hardon is the reason America was founded. Hardon is the reason Elvis was king and pizza was invented. <laughs> Hardon is the reason Jesus came to her. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yes, he was one of the best goddamn members to ever grace this planet. God bless America. We defend the human race from all threats. And now, Bobby, we have decided it is time for you to join us. Will you? Wait, Bobby said wide-eyed. You want me to join your super-secret spy space situation? Well, it's not in space. Well, not all of it, but yes. Hank held out his hand. Yes, Dad, I will do it. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> Bobby jumped out of his chair to shake his dad's hand. <laughs> Good, it is time for your training. Hank pressed a button on the control panel. It's time. The boy is ready. A door in, a door in the opened up. Two people walked through. One was a tall, handsome man with blonde hair. Mm. The other was an orange tabby cat walking on two legs. Oh, of course. Boomhauer and, Boom and Garfield <laughs> will be your instructor. <laughs> Wait, Bobby rubbed his eyes. Garfield is real? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you mean to tell me... <laughs> Of course I am, Bobby. That comic strip Jim Davis writes is just a cover story. I am, will be your combat teacher. An extremely conspicuous <laughs> cover story. Does not need to exist at all. <laughs> a cover story for something that's supposed to not exist. Does he go out actively? <laughs> Boomhauer here will teach you the art of being a spy, the cat replied. Mm, God dang, Bobby, I'll tell you what, I'm going to show you how to be real smooth, you know, like, hey, hey baby, you look in my friend today, it's just slid up in here. I tell you <laughs> what, listen here now, with me you will be able to talk your way through anything. I'm glad I didn't stop. I'm talk way through anything, mate. Hank placed his hand on his son's shoulder. Bobby... You are taking your first steps into a much bigger world. Do me proud, son. The end. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if that means that story was going to be an Invader Zim story. Oh my god. I wish you could have seen Garfield versus Invader Zim. I wish you could have seen Bobby versus Invader Zim. <laughs>
I thought Hank was gonna be a fucking invader. An Urkin? Yeah. <laughs> He's one of the talls. God. Let's see. Um, I give that story um, a computer named Cowgirl. I give that story a one eyed doctor visit. Which is apparently what Peggy was doing, whatever that means. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be an innuendo because Bobby said whatever that means. <laughs> also. I give that Bill Doe treep showing up for a scene. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Hey, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bobby. You're here. It is fucking Why Bobby. do you keep calling me Bill? Bobby ignores them and then Garfield and Bill walks or then Garfield walks approaches. <laughs> He's like, wait a minute. Garfield's real? <laughs> Why do you keep calling me bitch? <laughs> bitch? <laughs> Why do you keep calling me bitch? It's like you're playing some crazy game of tennis. 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 Boggle. Boggle. Alright. I already got mine slip sliding up, so I'm gonna zoom right into it. Okay. Seattle! Dib practically screamed at his father, Dr. <laughs> Membrane. Why, yes, Dib. Seattle, Dr. Membrane replied. I'll be there for a week at a nuclear physics convention. But that's so close, Dib argued. Well, it's not that close, but it's not the other side of the world. Why can't I come? Well, don't you have school to worry about? The scientist whose mouth still did not show behind his collar said. Dad, school ended three weeks ago. Dib guessed he was too wrapped up in his scientific breakthroughs to pay attention to unimportant dates. Oh, yes. Well, then I guess I can't object. Of course. <laughs> Gaz will have to come too. Gaz! He called across the room to the corner of the couch that Gaz was obsessively playing GS2 in. GS2? I'm guessing it's an in-show game, because she's a gamer. What's in Seattle? Hmm. You'd like to know, wouldn't you? Seattle, Washington. <laughs> There's the Space Needle. <laughs> Shut up, it is not a Space Needle. <laughs> what, are you what are you talking about? That's like the one thing in Seattle! No, I mean, that gives me no food. <laughs> There's no Space Needle. <laughs> No, I mean, that tells me nothing. Yeah, tinfoil hat, motherfucker. <laughs> no, the Space Needle isn't real. It's a popular <laughs> setting in Shadowrun. Okay. Let's see, where was I? There was cat hair on my phone screen. Okay. Okay. How would you like to come to Seattle for a week with me and Dib? Whatever was her non-responsive response. Well then, that's settled then. Better start packing, son. We leave tomorrow. Sweet, Dib exclaimed. Zim listened to Dib's conversation through the headphones, picking up the signal from the spy listening device he had placed in the membrane living room. Seattle? Zim spat the word out like, like something he would spit out. Computer! What is, where is this Seattle? It would appear that Dib is talking about a major city on the western coast of this continent, Sim, Zim's rarely reliable computer explained. Hmm, and Dib is going to be on the other side of the continent for an entire week, Zim noted. Perfect, no Dib monkey for a significant amount of time. Maybe I can finally get something done around here. Or Gur dropped from the ceiling. That's gonna be my Gur, by the way. So oh, get okay. used to that. <laughs> that is absolutely as high as I can reach. I feel. I feel. <laughs> Zim practically fell over as Gur landed on in his top. Or he could plot to stop you for. Uh, he could plot to stop you the whole time. He doesn't have you to worry about. Zim gasped. You actually have a point, computer. <laughs> Run an internet search for further information on this city. Processing, the computer stated. After a moment of searching, the gigantic computer monitor displayed the first web page it came up with. 
It was bubbly, over-decorated, and filled to the brim with colors that hurt oh, I know Zim's what it is. eyes. I know what this is. God damn it. Zim, Zim pondered, slightly disgusted at the frilliness of it all. Zim oh. took a seat at the computer control panel and put his hand on the trackball. Scrolling down the page, it seemed that this was the website dedicated to the primitive Earth videos. Or at least he figured they were primitive. Zim seriously doubted they projected holographic imagery. He scrolled back to the top, where there were several sections to choose from. iBlogs, iSnaps, iNews, iVideo, iPlay, iSongs, I Need Help, and Send Us Stuff. What was this mysterious I? How am I supposed to understand this earth gibberish? Zim asked angrily to no one in particular. Suddenly, one sentence off to the side of the page layout caught Zim's attention. Over one million visitors! What? Zim yelled. <laughs> Amazing! This iCarly website seems to have the support of a significant amount of the human population. I must find out how they do it, and I can't leave Dib alone across the continent. What if he, st what if he did something smart for a change? <laughs> Gur, ready the ship. We are going to Seattle. Yeah, coffee! Gur exclaimed and jetted off to prepare the Voot cruiser for flight. Zim's gonna put on a Gibby costume. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna waddle in. There you go. <laughs> Noah Monk, if you want to come on the podcast, we'd love to have you. Nobody else from my Carly. We'd love for you to fall from our ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> we'll set up the ladder. We'll put, we'll put an actual cushion on the ground, I swear. Get Thin cushion under a thin layer of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> the airport was incredibly crowded, and not, and not surprisingly, it was prime vacation time in the summer. Dib's father had gone to find the information desk, so Dib was hanging out at the coffee place. Well, places. Dib had to remind himself that this was Seattle, a big coffee capital. But still, seven coffee places in one airport, and not a single one cheap. Well, Dib wasn't big on coffee, but he might get himself, might as well get himself something. Dib got in line at the counter for one place called Rocky Coffee and started to check out the menu. Choco Moco Latte, Iced Chai Nilla, Roasted Cappuccino Bliss. How come nothing is spelled right? He decided, oh, that's a joke that's lost on audio. <laughs> he decided he he would just get a plain hot chocolate. Scanning the full to bursting airport, there were a lot of different people, but the majority of them were either obviously tourists or business people in suits, except for someone over there wearing an awful lot of green. Green? Wait, that wasn't clothing! Zim was here! Just when he thought he could have an actual vacation for protecting Earth, his mortal enemy shows up in Seattle. He would have gone over there himself, but he really wanted his hot chocolate and it'd probably be smarter to observe him from a distance for a little while. He noted that Zim was talking to somebody, just some kid a few years older than Dib, with short-cut brown hair. They laughed, then they appeared to say goodbye. Unfortunately, Zim walked in the opposite direction with a single rolling suitcase. The other guy, however, began to walk on in Dib's direction. Closer, closer, come on, Dib hoped, biting his lip to keep himself from saying it aloud. Amazing luck! He planted himself right at the end of the line Dib was in. He supposed he would have to postpone his hot cocoa for a couple more minutes if he wanted to get a chance to talk to this guy. He snuck himself backward in the line until he was in front of him. Uh, the still nameless guy began. Hi. Any particular reason you went backwards in the line? Well, yeah, actually, Dib answered. Listen, that green guy you were talking to earlier? You were spying on me? No, no, well, I just noticed you two at first, Th then I saw him. I guess I was kind of spying. Not but on him, not you. Anyway, listen, that green kid is pure evil. Huh? He inquired. Well, he was a little rude, but he wasn't. Hey, who are you anyway? My name is Dib, Dib Membrane. But listen, that's not important right now. Okay, well, I'm Freddie Benson, and... Wait, Membrane? Like... Dr. Membrane? <laughs> <laughs> Dib
dip side. How come everybody had to ask that? Why is Freddie Benson at the airport? I'm just He's laughing. going somewhere. I just keep thinking it's like the actual iCarly set, but they have a Roger Rabbit thing going on with Dr. Membrane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm his son. Oh my flippin' wow! Freddie almost screamed. That's not an almost scream if it's all caps and two exclamation points, but okay. <laughs> I'm a humongous fan of his work. Can I meet him? I've got to get his autograph. Sure, yeah, whatever. Did assured him grudgingly. But listen to me for a second, okay? Did you wonder why that kid was green? Well, yeah, at first. But he told me it was a skin condition. I think I've heard of it. Dermatomel... Dermatomelculitis, is it? Author's note from Drake and Josh, remember? LOL, of course, that's just <laughs> supposed to be the hands and feet. <laughs> it is not a skin condition. He's an alien plotting to take over the world. Well, I find that a little hard to believe. Is he still here? Dib and Freddy both turned and checked. Sure enough, Zim was still visible, although a bit further away. Just watching him. <laughs> Watch, Dib added. Just as Dib finished speaking, Zim twitched his eye a little, looking terribly uncomfortable. After looking around to make sure nobody would notice, he very quickly took out his fake human contact lens and rubbed his eye, replacing it skillfully af afterwards. Unfortunately, Freddy wasn't terribly quick to respond. Huh? What? He responded over a second after Zim was finished. Ah! Dib screeched in frustration. Well, do you see my point? Yeah, though? Yeah. And I feel inclined to believe you, but seriously, it's pretty far-fetched. Listen, he told me he's, well, he's alone here, so he's, ne he's never been to Seattle before. So I invited him to come over to my apartment, or uh, my friend's apartment, anytime he wanted. Good! Dib exclaimed. You can see for yourself. Can I come over too? Sure! Anything that'll help me meet THE Dr. Membrane. Sweet, Dib was Dib's ecstatic reply. So, what brings you to the airport? Oh, I'm waiting for my girl. Freddy paused. My friend, Carly, <laughs> to get here. She was in Yakima visiting her grandpa. That's the apartment I was talking about, hers. My mom is a little insane. I am not, Dis Dib instinctively replied. Uh, <laughs> Freddy said. Yes, she is. No, I mean... Oh, Dib realized embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> never mind. Chapter 3. Zim looked at the direction Freddy had given him back at the thing that humans referred to as an airport. He was currently sitting in the back of a taxi with Gurr in his lap to seem more dog-like, but his constant fidgeting it was getting annoying. Plus, every time he shifted his leg, Zim got a metal kick to the knee. Grr! Zim finally said annoyed. Either find a comfortable position for your leg or get off my lap! Sorry! Gurr replied, and was immediately as still as he could accomplish without exploding. Well, the cab driver said, here we are, the Hampton Inn. That'll be just as he was interrupted as Zim threw a large wad of cash in his face. Yes, the fair. Here! Zim yelled in a way that simply said that he didn't have time to chat. He pulled Gurr out of the car and suddenly stopped. Zim had to admit, he was pretty impressed with the sights he saw before him. A much bigger structure than many of the buildings in the town he spent most of his time in. The Hampton. <laughs> the hotel was almost normal looking. He had to remind himself, though, that it was on Earth. It wasn't normal. He marched into the hotel and up the counter with confidence. Hello, stink monkey! He greeted the random girl behind the counter. Reservations for Smith! They had needed a last name on the phone, which Zim happened not to have. <laughs> okay, just a moment, she said as she checked the all-important list. Yes, here you are. Let me get your room. The receptionist spotted Gurr in his disguise. Key. Uh, excuse me, sir, but we don't allow dogs in this hotel. What? Zim asked, genuinely confused. Gurr? No, he's a, uh, Onsekata Ali. With that, Zim left the perplexed receptionist at the counter and left the hotel. He 
He returned a moment later, pulling a wriggling, hopping suitcase behind him. Hello, he said as if nothing had happened. <laughs> Reservations for Smith. <laughs> she glared at him. Zim left. Oh my god. Uh, Zim said to Gur. I think we should follow those directions to the so-called apartments Freddy invited us to. They should be just around the block somewhere. I got it! Was Spencer's call from the kitchen, wiping spaghetti taco sauce off his hands with a towel. He walked to the door of the apartment and opened it. Nobody there? Hello, Zim said, rather annoyed. Spencer looked down. Oh! He realized. Sorry there, Shorty. Didn't see you. <laughs> uh, yes, was Zim's reply, still with a slightly ticked off demeanor. The one called Freddy met me at the airport and told me he'd be here? Oh, Spencer said again. You're the one Freddy told me about. Well, he's upstairs with Carly right now, so make yourself at home. Hey, any particular reason for the, uh... Greenness? Zim, not phased by the question, glanced around the room a bit. It was full of the meaningless structural creativities the human called sculptures. Although they were clearly none in the room that were literally sculpted out of clay. An artist like you dares to question an original creation of nature? Zim said with almost Sherlock Holmes-like skill. He may have been naive, but he'd always had a strong power for deducing. Spencer gasped. You're right! I've got to get back to work anyway. On that note, he turned around and went back to work on one of his sculptures. Zim made his way up the stairs to find Freddy and two females that could evidently be Carly, all sitting in beanbag chairs. As soon as she saw Zim, the blonde female began laughing uncontrollably. The brunette just stared. <laughs> Carly's silent. <laughs> just a blank, expressionless face. I'll be really happy if Carly doesn't talk, but I know she will. <laughs> and Carly, for... Carly's seen this situation before. Carly and knows for... exactly who he is and is scared. And <laughs> Freddy desperately tried to get their attention. Guys, hey guys, this is Zim, the one from the airport. You, you look like a tiny frog. The blonde managed to spit out between gasps of laughter. Ignore her, the brunette said, although clearly fighting back giggles herself. I'm Carly, and you must be Zim. Ah, yes, Zim realized. You are the Carly person. <laughs> and yes, I am Zim! Everybody flinched except the blonde, who was still giggling a little. <laughs> Sorry, so who's... Oh, that one? Freddy said with an air of disgust. <laughs> She's Sam. Well, Zim replied. Hello, Freddy, Carly, and Sam. Why do those names sound so familiar? Suddenly a small green figure peeked out from behind Zim's suitcase. Sam immediately stopped laughing. Oh she and Carly let out in unison. Carly went over to Gurr. Who's this little guy? She asked quietly as she patted him on the head. Oh, that's Gurr, Zim explained. My dog. How'd they let you into the hotel with a dog? Freddy asked suspiciously. Uh, Zim pondered what to say. They didn't. Wait! Carly realized. So you and your insanely cute puppy don't have anywhere to stay? Are homeless? <laughs> well, no. Spencer, you want a homeless man in our house? <laughs> Spencer! You keep letting people into our house. How do we have a... How do we have an elevator that goes to many rooms in our apartment? <laughs> How is this elevator connected to the ground floor? Why do we get an elevator in our fucking room? Why doesn't Freddy have an elevator in his room, but Carly has two, at least? <laughs> anyway. You can stay with us. Our couch can extend into a guest bed. <laughs> oh no. Wow, really? Zim you always say that. <laughs> it's true! <laughs> I want people to fold out on my couch bed. Zim said surprised. He hadn't expected to win this quickly. Well, uh, thank you, I suppose. 
Oh! Carly realized something. Freddy, do you have the new layout for iCarly up yet? Zim gasped. <laughs> iCarly. <laughs> oh no, thanks for reminding me, Freddy said. Freddy walked over to his computer. You, Zim began frantically, you are the creators of the iCarly? Yep, Sam confirmed. What, you didn't recognize us? Zim smirked. This was an interesting development. And that's all we got. What? No. Oh, well. Your biggest fan. I, I give that Jerry Trainer not caring about his house security. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> what was the name of this story? What was the name of the video game that, uh... GS2. Yeah, I give it GS2 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> I give that story, um... Freddie Benson inviting strangers to his house when he knows very well he's a very famous YouTuber. <laughs> he doesn't even live there. <laughs> I give that story Freddy inviting people to other people's houses. <laughs> He's got cloud, he can do whatever he wants. <laughs> God. He's gonna be in Logan Paul's airplane mode movie. Airplane, airplane mode, mode two, two, the airplane inning. <laughs> this track is slamming! I said this track is slamming. He has an unnatural obsession with Invader Zim. Don't give me that look. <laughs> Dude, I'm crushing you. Yeah, <laughs> he's one of us. Nicktoons Network, we love what you love. Bring it. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know. It could potentially mean not safe for work coming back, thank God. Oh, you wish. I will see. I don't like Tumblr anyway. I liked it just fine. Like, I never, like, stayed on there enough to really get a feel for the community. It's it's better than Twitter in that regard is in that you actually have to, like, pursue people in order to, like, get a feel for, like, bad fandoms. I suppose. I don't know, like, I like Twitter because it has because it has like the commenting system that it does. Yeah. Like with Tumblr, it, it never seemed very like inviting to join yeah. something, and like the only way to comment was just leave it on a list of likes and like reblogs. Oh yeah. It was very jarring to me. It's quite it was cool. a great art resource, sure. Oh yeah. But it, I wouldn't say it's a very social social media. Yeah. True. At least from what I got out of it, I know there's DMs and notes or whatever, but. Hmm. I feel that. I don't know. I stopped using it way, way long ago. Mm -hmm. Before they, before the drama even happened. Yeah. Uh, before like they banned stuff, it was like probably my second biggest social media, I think. Which makes sense. One got all attraction on that website. Mm -hmm. it's so funny, like. They finally released like the statistics for the user base and it lost like over thirty percent of its friggin' user base after that shit. That <laughs> that's was so fun. that's and, funny. Yeah, and like not long after that Verizon decided they were gonna sell it. <laughs> well what do you know? So much for white knighting. Mm -hmm. I'm glad though, that sets a good precedent. It'll tell other companies that were thinking of doing that what'll happen. Yeah, Patreon will think twice before they get rid of you. Yeah, Patreon ain't fixing to do anything like that. Where, what they've done in lieu of that has just been like, they essentially made their user policy, if you do anything that can fuck our reputation, then you're gone. That's essentially Patreon's, like, user policy. So you can't have, you can't say the N-word. Yeah, you can't. And that's it. Yeah, you can't promote, like, bigoted type stuff and crowdfunded or anything like that. Just anything that if someone said, why is this on Patreon, Patreon, you're bad, then they can basically say, well, someone else had a problem with this, so you're gone. 
That's fine. I don't really do anything for their reputation that a million other people don't already do. Mm -hmm. So I'm I should be good. But yeah, Elias Tumblr got sold to Automatic, which is the parent company to WordPress. Really? Yeah, just now. So. But Tumblr got sold to them. Yeah, from Verizon. <coughs> Oh, so Ver is Verizon the one that instituted the uh, problems recently? Pretty much. Verizon is like, yeah, it's a combination of Tumblr wanting to be on the App Store and then being bought by Verizon, which is, I believe, don't they also own Yahoo? I don't know where that would make sense. I'm not sure, but nonetheless, regardless, they are part of the problem, and uh, so immediately they released statistics for their user base because they wanted to see the traffic and whatnot, and they released it, and ever since that ban, they lost over 30% of their traffic, so they essentially, so then immediately after that, Verizon planned to um, sell it, and Pornhub was like trying to buy it from them and whatnot, and so people were iffy about that because like Pornhub is one of the biggest instigators of stealing art and people oh, yeah. using it in porn ads and shit. Uh -huh. So they weren't on board with that, but they finally found a company to sell to, and fuck, it's WordPress. I don't... What is WordPress's... Like, as far as I know, they're pretty open to, like, people using their platform for whatever they see fit, but mm -hmm. I don't know how that extends to, like, pornography, because obviously they don't host a lot of uh, porn sites, as far as I'm aware. The, well, like a lot of the bigger porn sites that I go to, like that are individual runner, like on WordPress. Oh, or, really? Yeah, like uh, huh. Shadbase is on WordPress. Um, oh, okay. Doxy's websites are on WordPress. A, a good fair amount are on WordPress. Huh. But like, I don't know what Automatics like standards are. I don't know a damn thing about them. But I mean, hell, it's hopefully it's a good news. I'd like to get my account back or at least start a new account. Hmm. Though I don't know if the damage to the reputation is like permanent. Who knows? You can call it two breed. Two breed. Oh god. Yeah, because the same people working on it that instituted that policy, they could not want to like backtrack. Yeah. But maybe. I mean, if their income is any way directly tied to like how much traffic they get, then I couldn't see why they wouldn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read my story. <laughs> Chapter one. Zim sits in his base, reading the Earth newspaper as Gur walks into the room. Hi, Master! Hi, Gur. Okay, we've confirmed that none of us can do a Gur impression. That makes me feel better. Well, I, don't, I can't, like, robot <laughs> filter my voice. I live here, Adam's apple. <laughs> Hi, Master! You're scaring Hi, master. Steven. Let's do the, I'll just do the voice. <laughs> Hi, Master! Hi, Gur. Hi, Gur. Hi, Gur. <laughs> Sounds closer. And then laugh track ensues. Gur walks up to one oh, of the- Oh, no! <laughs> Is this also like Carly? No. No. Gur walks up to one of the cupboards and takes out a cereal box. Zim notices and yells, No, Gur. Those are expired. To which Gur responds by inspecting the box. How does cereal become expired? Anyway, master, it's not like it has milk in it. Laughing track. <laughs> well, cereal is often used with milk, so might as well throw it out when we're out of milk or when it becomes expired. Zim replies, still eyeing the paper he's holding. Do you want to just like do, give us a hand signal whenever it says laughing track or something? Sure. Like I'll just put a finger up. But what if I use milk for something after it's expired? Gur inquires as he pulls out a giant spoon, opens his head, and spoons out a giant blob, which is unmistakably said product. Then keep the cereal and ah, whatever. This conversation is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, in bursts a smelly human with a very recognizable large size of a head, surprising and angering Zim by just walking in through the door without knocking. <laughs> Zim, I'm gonna stop you this time. Dip speaks for some reason with a Brooklyn accent. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Zim, I'm gonna stop you this time. <laughs> Ooh. From continuing this useless line of dialogue, yes please, Zim snarks. <laughs> anyway, Gur completely ignores the intruding loser. How did your comedy routine go the other night, Master? 
The sewer unit said as he threw the rotten milk into a bowl along with the expired cereal, then took two bread slices and put the bowl in between. <laughs> oh, you know, Sim grins, cocky. The usual stuff works with these cretins. Cut away to Zim standing on a lit stage with a brick wall behind him, a spotlight as he talks into a mic to a room full of people. You know humans, right? How they're... I mean, we are so predictably weak, it's almost ridiculous. The audience laughed somehow before he reached the punchline. Well, killable is more like it. The audience laughed again, even though it wasn't a joke. It's like they walked around being like, Hey, kill me, please. I mean, somehow, someway, sooner or later, you're gonna die, right? So you might as well, like, cut to the chase. It should be more like, Hey, kill me, please, boom! Zim says as he mimics cocking a gun. That also spares you <laughs> useless human courtesy, like, You're welcome! The audience laughed so hard they almost peed themselves. <laughs> it was just that funny. <laughs> also, you should all die. I'm gonna kill you all. <laughs> Zim continued as the audience barely had time to catch their breath, causing them again to riot in laughter. No, he's got it. Cut back to Zim's face. <laughs> Stinks. <laughs> One day, I'm gonna kill them with laughter and I will rule the earth, Zim chuckles. Not if I can help it, Dib quips as he Not if I can help it, Dib quips as he goes to the tackle Zim, who just responds by stepping aside as humans tumbles onto the floor. As said human tumbles onto the floor. By being a complete bore, I guess you really are a threat then, Zim expresses. Sarcastically. Having people roll on the floor with laughter by being a complete jerk. This is just one video clip and it's syncing up way too well. We all wish we could do the same thing for a living, really. But really, you are a complete loser. Everyone hates you. Your head is big, and to fit this story, you're also bald and have an unattractive Brooklyn accent. What could you possibly do to defeat someone as charismatic and amazing as me? He's bald? <laughs> By bawling you to death? Dib answers to which Gurr laughs. Yeah, he can make a living off of that. I think it's called being a mime. The robot squeals. Stop, Gurr. Don't give him ideas. It will be my next plan if this one fails. The door opens and Gaz comes in, holding a game slave. The audience cheers for some reason. Oh, that's what GS is. <laughs> yeah! I'm only in this story because I was promised a game slave. I'm only in this. How do I make her not sound like Gurr? <laughs> I'm only in this story because I promised a game slave one if I participated. So yeah, I'm the token girl, I guess. And I go out with guys because I'm a girl. And I work as an editor. How do you all do? She talks monotonously. Monotonously. Yeah, just fine. I'm wallowing in the mud and self pity. Feel sorry for me. Dim pleads. <laughs> Yeah, no. But I can help you in the mud if you want, <laughs> Gaz says. <laughs> Laughing track. <laughs> Steven, fuck you. <laughs> I'm going out to eat some squirrels and do random crap because that's what I do. Hee hee hee. Gur took the rest of the cereal. Oh, and I'm taking this cereal with me. He continues and leaves the base after putting on his puppy suit. What did he say? See you real? Dib asked, scratching his bald head. I think he said, see real. Gaz comments. Why do these wads sound so similar? Says Dib. Oh my tallest. Uh, oh my tallest. I can't believe we're back to this stupid conversation. I wonder if there's any milk left. Zim says as he rummages through the cupboard. Try looking A in the cupboard. cereal. Try looking in the cereal, suggests Gaz. Laughing track times ten. <laughs> Thanks, Steven. Cuts to Zim doing a comedy routine again. So, what I learned from this is that milk stuff and cereal stuff go together. Is this a sign guess... script? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. <bless> you. <laughs> I was reading through this one too, I was considering. 
So what I learned from this is that milk and cereal go together. I guess they should call it Muriel. The audience roars. <laughs> and then mishmash the little flakes until they're completely disintegrated into milk. That's not Muriel anymore. It's regular milk. One person in the audience laughed so hard he got a heart attack and died. <laughs> Upon noticing, Zim smiles. At least these lame jokes are paying off. I'm gonna conquer your filthy planet and send it to planet Earth to make it suitable for our living conditions. Then you're gonna die from <laughs> laughter. <laughs> Zim screams into the mic. The audience laughed for the millionth time for no reason. The millionth time for no reason. Steven! One you're not first. even... This doesn't help us at all! <laughs> you looked <laughs> up iCarly, but without the music or laugh track. That's giving way to my ass. <laughs> you have lost your privileges. <laughs> no! One person yelled from his seat, You suck! The rest of the audience <laughs> booed at said person. Hi. You lie. Also you lie. Well. Zim hit back while pointing at him. The audience laughed at his amazing comeback. After this whole spectacle was over, they did something predictable for the sitcom standards and ended up in jail. But then they died, so they went to death jail. I guess you can call it post-mortem incarceration. Laughing tracks times one zero 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 zero. Author's note. I unironically enjoy Seinfeld, but I have to admit, I sometimes don't understand the humor. So I made a little joke about it. That's the funniest with our... joke yet. <laughs> <laughs> I unironically love Seinfeld. But I don't understand the humor. You can probably piece out who is supposed to be whom. Have a relaxing Sunday. The end. I bet that sounds like shit. Oh my god. Sure, it sounds great. <laughs> I rate that story laughing track times one zero 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 zero. I rate that episode of Seinfeld with the laughing track never stops. I rate that same stand up where he just screams that he's gonna kill the audience into the mic and they all laugh and love it. Screams of comedy. <laughs> Jesus. I still want to watch this. Steven! After the show. Okay, okay. You can't just look up iCarly, but the music and laugh track were cut out during a recording session, let alone while we're reading a story. I thought you were going to play it without this. Just, I thought it was going to be just the laugh track from iCarly. That's what I thought was going to be a first Nick two, Kirby honestly, is. but then I actually read the title. You are scum. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, everybody. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Crossing the Line. Remember to rate the video, comment, and subscribe, and also like the video, and follow us, and share the video on Twitter and YouTube. Uh, I'm being gestured to... Uh... <laughs> okay. And that's, that's been it. Nope, not it. Okay. <laughs> Please share this with your friends and follow us for more content. Let us know what you'd like to see us tackle next. I don't uh, know what I'd like to see us tackle next, but no one I was going to say... <laughs> I was going to say, but it doesn't matter what you want because we have to ask George what he wants to do next. <laughs> George... What do you want to do? I've thought long and hard about this question. <laughs> Can we look up one for cheering, please? I've decided that our next episode is going to be a fan fiction classic, a fan favorite, if you will. We're going to be taking out some scripts from the old TV series that you all know and love that I sure enjoyed as a tween and later. I want to see some... Would you find it already? <laughs> <I'm trying. laughs> you can look up iCarly with no laugh track in <laughs> 0.2 seconds, but you can't find a specific thing. It was on the list. <laughs>
Okay, okay. I want to read Ben 10 fan fiction. Yay! <laughs> When I looked up cheer track, there's a second one here. The cheer track. Well, that's the crossing the line theme song. <laughs> that scoops. <laughs> this podcast is <laughs> shitty. <laughs> <laughs> Soy, soy, soy. Wow.